Okay, so in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add a cropping feature to your web app. So Cayman.js has the ability to crop and resize the canvas built right into it. Um, so we're actually going to be using the plugin for Cayman.js that you can read about on the Cayman.js website to accomplish this. We're also going to add the ability to preview what the cropping area might look like. So to get started, I have my uh, app open by double clicking on the index.html file. I also have my index, script, and styles files open. I'm going to go ahead and um, we're going to be adding code first to our index file. So if we go back to the Cayman JS um, cropping plugin, we can read a little bit about it. And the information that Cayman needs to actually crop our image is going to be the width of the cropping area. So how wide should the image be once it's cropped? The height, so how tall should it be? The starting top left corner of where the cropping should begin. So the X and Y location of the starting left um, corner. So we actually need to get this information from the user. One way that we're going to do that is just by using some simple input boxes where the user can type in some values. Then we'll let them preview it before they go ahead and crop. So to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to add four different inputs, one for width, one for height, one for x, one for y, um, that are text inputs. And we're going to put them inside of our tools div. Now, this is going to work better if they crop the image before they start applying all of these different changes. So I'm going to put this, these inputs right under my choose file um, input towards the top of the menu. But you can put it anywhere that you want. So to get started, go to your index.html file. Find the spot that you want to put these inputs in. I'm going to do it right here underneath my input type equals file. And let's go ahead and start adding the first input, which is going to be width. Each one is going to have an ID that matches um, the type of information that's being put in there. So for width, the ID will be width, type is text. I'm also going to add a placeholder, which is the text that will show up inside of the box, kind of grayed out to tell the user what to type in. For this one, I'll say enter a width for your image. And then it's a self-closing tag. I am also going to add a BR tag so that each input goes on its own line. And now you're going to do this also for height. And then you're also going to do this input for X and Y values. Once you're done adding those inputs, save your changes, refresh your app so that you can see where they show up. Um, and so I have my four inputs here. I've actually added some styling that has them um, set to this width. So in my CSS, I styled the input to have a width of 225 pixels and a margin of 5px to give them some space between. So you can also create a style like that if you'd like. The next thing that we need to do is we actually need to add a preview button and then a cropping button that the user can click to preview and then once they like the preview they can crop. So we're going to use this doing with the button tag. The first one will give an ID equal to preview. The next button we will give an ID equal to crop. Go ahead and save your change, refresh your page, and we can see the preview and the crop button show up here in our menu. Awesome. All right, now we're actually ready to start adding some JavaScript that's going to make all of these inputs work. Because right now, even if I type into these inputs, and choose a file, nothing happens because I haven't programmed these buttons to do anything or written any JavaScript. So come over to your script.js file and we're going to make first a function that will allow us to preview the cropping area. We're going to make a preview by creating a semi-transparent box that is drawn over the cropping area temporarily. 
And then we'll also create a cropping function and we'll call both of those functions when we click on the button. So let's start with the preview. I'm gonna go ahead and add this before my last closing line, but after my submit or my um my text extension or my save button, depending if you have the text extension or not. So let's get started by saying function. The name of our function we're gonna say preview crop. We're not passing in any parameters. We need our opening curly, closing curly, and I'm gonna add my closing semicolon right now. Now we have a lot of lines of code that we're gonna add inside this function. In order to preview the cropping space, we're gonna use the fill rect method for the can for drawing on a canvas. Um, however, but one of the things that we need is we need to know where to draw that rectangle. So we need to get the values that we the user types in from these inputs. So we're gonna create four variables, one for width, height, x and y and we're going to get the value that the user types in here now when the user types in a value this is a text input so the computer the browser is going to read this actually as um, words but not as a number so it's going to read this um, as text and we need it to take the text and turn it into a number and we can use that by um, calling number on the value that we're getting all right so let's go ahead and see what this looks like we're going to say var width equals number with a capital N, opening parenthesis, document dot get element by ID. The ID that for width is width. We need dot value. And then outside of the closing parenthesis, we're going to have our semicolon. This says go and get whatever the user types here into the width box get that value and make this a number and we're going to set that to width. Now we're going to do this for height x and y. Okay, so we have our four variables height, width, x, and y that we'll be able to use to draw a rectangle. The next thing we need to do is we need to get our canvas um, which is going to be the by the ID of image, and then we need to get the context for our canvas, set the color of a rectangle, and actually draw the rectangle. So we'll start out by saying bar canvas equals document dot get element by ID. The ID is image. This is getting our image canvas that's created. Then we'll say var ctx equals canvas.getContext oops, that context um, opening parenthesis uh, quotations 2D that gets the context and now we're going to say CTX we're going to set the fill style for the canvas so fill style equals RGBA inside of quotation marks, parentheses, 0, 0, 0, 0 0.5. This draws a semi-transparent black box. We need a semicolon. And then we'll say ctx.fill rect x, y, width, comma, height. Oops. All right, so it's going to draw a rectangle on our canvas over the cropping area. Now the first uh, parameters that we pass in are going to be the x value, so the starting x location, the starting y location, then how wide the rectangle should be, and the height. Go ahead and save that. Now one thing I want to point out is that if you didn't do the extension for the text, you may not have added a line of code that will go ahead and create a canvas when we load the image. So come up to the top of your script file. When we have our function for load input handler, after the image element set attribute line, we actually want to make sure that a canvas is created of the image that we load in. So we're, you should call the Cayman method if you haven't done this already. All right, I already have that, so I'm not going to go ahead and add it again. So right now, it's going to draw a permanent rectangle on our image and we actually want to delay that. So to delay it, we can use something called set timeout to call our reset button handler function. So 
we wrote a function that will reset the canvas and clear off anything that's on it up here. We can actually call that to erase the preview for when we're going to, um, so that we can re-preview it again or so that when we crop the image we don't see that preview, that box that's over there. Um, first what I'm going to go ahead and do just to show you what this will look like is let's write the code that's actually going to call the function preview crop when we click on the button. So we'll say var preview, we're going to create a variable that gets our element um, by its ID of preview. So it gets the preview button so that we can use it. And then we'll say preview dot on click equals preview crop. All right, save that, refresh. Let's see what it looks like without the timeout. So let's say 400, 400, 50, 50. Got to choose a file. All right, and then if we press preview, we'll see that there's a box here. But now the box does not go away. So what we want to do is we don't want the user to have to click the reset button and then click crop. We want um, the, this to automatically go away. So inside our preview crop function, what we can do is we can say set timeout function inside of parentheses, opening parentheses, closing parentheses, opening curly. We have a closing curly, closing um, parenthesis. I'm going to add my semicolon. Inside of this function, we're going to call the reset button handler function with empty parentheses, semicolon. Now, after the closing curly bracket, we're going to say comma 3000, and this is going to make it wait about three seconds before the box is deleted. So let's try this again. Refresh your page after you save. Go ahead and choose a file. 400, 400, 50, 50. Let's click preview. And the box disappears. So if you want that to happen faster, then you can change this value to like 2000. It's up to you. But that's going to be our preview so that we can see the cropping area before we actually press the crop, the crop button. All right. So now what we need to do is we need to write a function that will actually crop the image and that will call that function when we click on the crop button. To do this, we're going to create a new function. It's going to be after I call my preview crop function. Um, and we'll name this function crop image. Pass it no parameters, opening curly, closing curly. I'm going to go ahead and add my closing semicolon. And inside of this function, we actually need to get the values, again, that the user has typed in to use inside of our function. So I'm going to go ahead and copy var width, height, x, and y, and paste this right into my function. Because we're going to use these to actually crop the image. The next thing we need to do is call the Cayman method on our image. So quotes. pound image, comma, function, empty parentheses, curly bracket, closing curly bracket. I'm going to go ahead and add my semicolon right here. And inside, to actually crop, we can just say this.crop. Now, the cropping method for Cayman looks a little bit different in terms of the order that you're going to put x, y, width, and height. It actually takes the width first, then the height, then x, then y, need our semicolon, and then we still need to render this, so this dot render, empty parentheses, semicolon. Save this. That's going to be our crop image function. And now we just need to call it when we click on the crop button. So just like with preview, we need to create a variable that gets the element crop, and then call our crop image function when that button is clicked. All right, save your change. Come over here, refresh your page. Let's choose a file. Up to, all right, let's say 400. Well, actually, I'm going to say 500 for the width, 400 for the height, 50, 50 preview. That looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to go ahead and say crop.
and now my image is cropped and I can still use all of the filters and things like that and I can still type text and you should still be able to save your cropped image and that is going to be the crop um, extension. All right.